So your kids are off to university next week and they're well prepared for the academic grind with good grades and a resume heavy with extracurricular activities. But when they leave home, can they manage their money, cook a pot of spaghetti or clean the toilet? Authors Kim Sarzur and Sharon McKay have written a book to teach kids the basics of living on their own. It's called Good to Go, A Practical Guide to Adulthood, and they join me now here in studio. Welcome to you both. Hi, good morning. Well, I was looking through this book, and it's, it's <laughs> not just for kids. I mean, this book has everything in it. Yeah. So... It's like a manual of how to live well, as an adult. The problem was, where do we stop? I think we could have kept going, right? And we, done we two had, more? We had to call it quits yeah. at some point, but yes, it could be a lot thicker than that. Uh, well, why did you do it? Was it, was the, why did you uh, assume that young people, when they set out to live on their own, aren't really prepared with the basics? I guess we were looking at our own kids and um, their, their misadventures as they tried to become adults and, and made some huge mistakes. And we realized we're, our kids are probably not alone. There's a lot of kids out there who really don't have a clue. So what, did, what, what do they need to be doing better? What's missing from, from what their parents are well, teaching Well, first them? of all, this is probably the brightest group of kids on earth. Um, my children could rewire my house. Um, but in our effort to sort of create these renaissance kids, you know, the kids who can play the cello and, and play tennis and do all these other things, we didn't, we didn't teach them the basics. We didn't have time. So they were missing all the, there was these huge gaps in their education. And we thought, okay, you know what, it's too late. So here's the plan. We're going to create this massive book. It's for the bathroom. Throw it in the bathroom. Say, darling, it's in the book. Unless you're bleeding from the head, don't call home. <laughs> hey, Kim, what, what did you find? Some, give me some practical examples when you were beginning your research. What kinds of things did you want to point out that, that these young people could be doing better? Well, I, I, I think probably getting a roof over their head and food in their stomach was probably the priority. So we had to, to teach them about um, what, what a lease is and how important it is when you sign a contract that you're looking at the fine print um, and, uh, and, and how not to burn your new apartment down um, and, uh, and not get food poisoning in the process. I think health is another really important area that they need to know about when their friend is, is, is drunk and lying down there. Is he asleep or is he unconscious? When do you call 911? Um, I, I don't know. Sharon, you, you were talking uh, about nutrition. That, that, that was something. Oh, that there was my own son. I mean, this has become a classic actually now. Um, when he went off to university, incredibly bright kid, and by the way, doing brilliantly now, uh, got scurvy, which I had previously scurvy. thought was just for pirates. Yeah. Um, actually, we were talking about it the other day, and he said, I would made a quote to say that he li lived off of chicken wings and beer for a year. Um, and he read this, he said, Mom, no, 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 I was a vegetarian back then. Uh, there was no chicken wings, just beer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, so, yeah. So what is it about parents that we're not teaching our children the basics? Are we doing too much for our children? I mean, we, we, if you're telling me that they can't, you know, make a salad or cook a pot of spaghetti... It, I think we've made choices in raising our kids. And there's a strange sort of peer pressure that we're dealing with. All of the other kids are involved in all these lessons and power skating for hockey. If we miss that, are we, are we doing our kids a disservice? So we say, all right, what's more important, teaching them how to scour the toilet or making sure that they can do all of these things and they're getting good enough grades to get into university because it's far more you know, difficult to get into university now. So we, it's a trade-off and we've decided, okay, this is what we have to put the priority on right now, not, not the, the, the scouring toilets. And the, the time we had when, when our kids were small, we were always in such a rush. I have a grandchild now and we do sort laundry together. We do fill up the dishwasher together, but when my kids were small, it was too, we were in too much of a hurry. Now, but once you got going, boy, you didn't stop because <laughs> you've got how to clean the eaves troughs, when to clean the eaves well, troughs. Well, kids are renting houses. Um, first year university, second year university, they're often renting houses. They don't know how to turn on the temperature. They don't know what temperature the house should be. They barely know where the furnace is. So we, want, we wanted to have that also, that first house, the first time out the door. And then you go on even into uh, areas such as etiquette. And I, I found it fascinating to teach them about how to behave at funerals of a face that they may not be familiar with. Is yeah. this something that, uh, that's come up with young people? Or, well, or you just decided we're putting it all out there? 
I, Sharon had an interesting uh, experience with her <laughs> with some kids going to a, uh, a, a funeral. funeral with gift bags. <laughs> yeah, they turned up with gift bags, <laughs> and I was driving the car actually, and it was a these difficult are, these drive. These are people these in were their sixteen-year-old oh, girls, 16 -year -old girls. Okay. who desperately wanted to, to make their friend happy. It was done out of the goodness of their heart, but it was very funny. <laughs> it was very sweet. Um, and you think about it, a lot of our kids, you know, at the ages of eighteen, nineteen, twenty, their grandparents are still alive. In many cases, great grandparents are still alive, so they haven't had that experience. Those life experiences. I knew there was a reason why I didn't like gift bags. <laughs> what, uh, what surprised you the most about the reaction that you're getting from your kids? I'm sure you've shown them to your kids and to, and to their friends. My kids love it. They get a laugh. Yeah, I think that there's an awful lot of really funny anecdotes in there. We've been talking with our friends and our friends' ki friends kids and this, so it's filled with some really stupid things that kids have been doing and, and I think that's what keeps them leafing through the book. They can find some things they can relate to. Well thank you very much for sharing it. Good read and uh, good to go. Thanks very much. You're welcome.